scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Spiritual activities like prayer and fasting and so on and so forth are really being emphasized in the body of Christ. Now people are having a heightened awareness of the value of these spiritual experiences. But we need to be careful because Satan also wants that kind of condition. The moment your hunger and your desperation rises to its zenith and you are not conscious of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, eventually you will arrive the realm of the Spirit and you will be escorted by strange and familiar spirits into error that will make for doom and destruction a few years ago in Zaria I think I've shared this story somewhere I finished a meeting and then just to see a few people to counsel them and then I'm seeing these three or four gentlemen and one of them had this beautiful priestly regalia and I was wondering wow what a gentleman this guy really wants to be a Nazarene I thought it was just his passion to be like Jesus only for me to find out that that gentleman believed he was Jesus not like Jesus not in the image of Jesus Jesus they came from Kano and the other gentleman who was with him was I, I, I think was it Judas now or John one of these guys no 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 I'm not joking I really mean what I'm saying they really believed it and for some reason they believed that like jesus received that impartation from john they left Cano and they came to me for that that semblance of the baptism i was watching with shock now i've seen all kinds of things in ministry believe me i've seen all kinds of things but this one was unique and strange and interesting that a human being can actually come to that point do you know when i researched those guys started as a prayer group they didn't start as people who were bad people they were sincere gentlemen who felt like they wanted to press into spiritual things welcome to the realm of the spirit unassisted by the holy ghost and you find out that another spirit will drive you into all kinds of things and will ship back doctrines of demons will ship back all kinds of things that destroy people people have written books out of false encounters people have deceived now the body of christ is practically confused we do not even know many believers don't know whether they are saved or not again because of the many extra biblical encounters that have come and it does not mean that the people who had these encounters were necessarily bad they have not been taught the protocol of accessing the supernatural there are all kinds of combinations of trado african religion together with spiritism and then you find scriptures in psalms to back it up and that becomes a terrible combination like a bad cook and you create something that destroys people there is a reason why i'm teaching you on the supernatural this morning number one because it is god's desire that we access these realms if we must walk in victory we cannot shy away from the reality of this realm but number two to provide for us a road map by the spirit so that we do not delve into all kinds of error and superstition that would destroy us and destroy our lives let me finish my story i honestly cannot even remember how i finished with those gentlemen 
because I think that guy was determined to remain Jesus I, I think I remember trying to propose and advise him and to let him know that our dominion in this kingdom is not absolute dominion it is shared dominion the life of God that we have was not derived from us it came from Jesus to us by connection and yet they would not believe I know a gentleman many years ago again who really began praying and pressing into spiritual things until he eventually became it was a mental condition I think it resulted to something like bipolar that gentleman was in the hospital for a very long time in fact he stayed in my house I brought him then at that time to stay in my house for a day or two hoping that the presence of God in that house will help rehabilitate whatever was happening to him and I woke up in the night and I saw the gentleman carrying a handkerchief looking for my mirrors I said you are leaving the next day by the morning you are out of my house I've made my spiritual contribution God knows I love you are we together many people have routed the realm of the spirit in unauthorized ways i hope you know that there are many ways to enter a house for instance you can tear the roof and come in you are in the house but you are in the house illegally you can jump through the fence you can squeeze through the window but the authorized way to enter the house is through the door jesus and jesus alone said i am that means i am the authorized access the way the door you can follow through any other route if you enter my house through my window you are in my house but you are not welcome are we together this is not to plant fear in you we are discussing the subject of encounters and we have to be careful the supernatural is a realm that is available for all the supernatural is a realm that we should all get to that means you should get to a point in your life where you can manifest the gifts of the spirit you should get to a point in your life where your eyes are open to encounter and have visionary experiences all of these systems of advantage as i call them they are important for the excelling of the believer but if you are not guided the devil will deceive us and manipulate our sincere desire into realms and encounters and activities that will destroy us hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the supernatural is an interplay between the word of god and the spirit of god let me talk for a minute or two about the word of god please look up when you are dealing with the subject of the supernatural there is something about god you have to know and understand that the boundary of god's commitment to the believer is his word the word of god represents the jurisdiction of god's commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions that the word allows you have to understand this he has limited his interaction with man to the provisions that scripture allows that means if you cannot find the basis for that interaction from scripture god is not committed to it are we together now this is this is a rule of thumb that you have to understand in your desire to explore the realm of the spirit that the boundary of god's commitment to man is his word that means there is nothing god will ever do with man do for man do to man that will be outside the provisions that his word allows in fact the bible says that he has exalted his word above his reputation so there is no other way an individual will be saved in this kingdom because according to scripture the formula for administering salvation is that with your heart you believe unto righteousness is that true and that with your mouth confession is made unto salvation so if anyone ever tells you he or she was saved you have a right to ask them how did you get saved 
verify the formula if it's not consistent with scripture no matter what kind of peace he has he's not safe based on scripture our confidence must come or be derived from the provisions that the scripture allows the bible says in obtaining promises if it is god's way there are two things that must be added to your equation faith and patience it says to follow them who through faith and patience if you ever meet a man who obtained a promise in the kingdom and you do not find the application of faith and you do not find patience he says run away even if there is a promise he's holding so there is faith and patience are we together now when you understand the administration of the word of god then it is going to be difficult for you to delve into error I give you an instance if God opens my eyes right now and say I see a dear sister here and I see a spirit standing behind her or I see a grave now I'm interpreting how spiritual things happen now I'm seeing all these kinds of things because the way the realm of the spirit works is very different from the way this realm works the concept of time and distance in the realm of the spirit is not exactly the way it works here in one minute i can see something that would take me 10 minutes to interpret are we together now yes the 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 capacity to assimilate is higher in the realm of the spirit than this realm we can be praying right now and i can say in jesus name and i'll be sharing something that i just saw and it will take over five ten minutes the realm of the spirit is by far superior to this realm when the hand wrote on the wall in the days of daniel it was only four words from the physical realm mene mene tekel ufesen but mene alone meant oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting <laughs> So imagine what happens when you pray in tongues. That 10 minutes of praying in tongues, you are not just saying ba 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 ba. Your mind thinks that's what you are saying. But in the realm of the spirit, you are stretching and you are creating realities and interacting with the realm of the spirit. Are we blessed now? I hope someone is learning something. So back to my vision. I'm seeing this lady for instance and I'm seeing a grave and I'm seeing destruction now I can interpret everything based on what I saw and I say young lady stand up then I will tell her that I just saw a grave I just saw a spirit behind you and I can leave that lady in that state and destroy her faith dampen her confidence about God and allow the devil to now take advantage of her imagination and manifest what i saw or i can interpret what i have seen from the lens of scripture now i have seen the grave the grave has never been except for the situation of jesus the grave has never really been a place of advantage it's a representation of death and doom and destruction is that true so when i see a grave and i see a spirit i must be able to pass my vision through the lens of scripture to profit that lady the interpretation must be constructed in a way and a manner that regardless what i saw victory is what she must hear are you getting what i'm saying now my scene may be correct but because i do not know that the word of god is more superior listen the dominion of the word of god is not only in this physical realm even if you take the word of god to the realm of the spirit every spirit will submit to it also if god the spirit submits to the word of god there is no other spirit that stands higher than the word of god the word of god still commands authority and dominion even in the realm of the spirit are we together So if I see you dead in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just going to stand and say, I see you dead. There are many scriptures that will support my interpretation. Number one, I will discern your level of maturity. Are you matured enough for me to give you that vision without it affecting your confidence? 
if i discern you are immature i will leave it and pray about it i will just minister life to you and not have to tell you the vision because receiving that vision when you are not grounded even if i pray for you the the level of, of the low level of transformation will still make you a victim of what i've said is god teaching someone something this morning There have been many times when I'm about to take a trip and then I get text messages from people and many genuine, sincere people, some of them prophets, and they say, Apostle, you're about to take a trip. And I say, that's exactly true. Say, be careful. Please don't go. I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. And they're not lying. That was what Satan planned that morning when I woke up. But I have to get there because... I'm aware that Satan does not have any special occasion to kill me. The Bible already gives me an information that any day and any time he finds a chance. He is an enemy. There is no rest as far as that agenda is concerned. So that news of, of tragedy based on my transformation is not news. I have always known he does not like me. There's nothing new about it. Now listen, I do not dishonor the vision that that man saw. But then my confidence is based on the fact that I have the principles of scripture that can veto that spiritual activity and I go on my journey and return back safely. Just on hearing that vision, at least three scriptures come as weapons. One, I shall not die, but live and declare. You don't just make bold face for nothing. There has to be a scriptural basis. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Go and ask my parents. Go and ask every spiritual leader in this nation whether I have dishonored them. So what becomes the basis? Where is the hedge broken that the serpent will strike? And then number three, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. That becomes the basis of my confidence. If all I say is, God forbid, I wouldn't die. You would die like you, are, you cannot imagine. It has to be the scripture. That the scripture has authority even in the realm of the spirit. I don't need to know what spirit was assigned. I just need to know that every spirit must submit to scripture. I pray you understand what I'm teaching this morning. Let me teach you within the few minutes we have left how to correctly access the supernatural. We we'll have some time this evening to pray for the sick and to minister. So do well to invite as many people who are trusting the Lord who we'll have some time to minister. I think you should clap with your pastor too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It will be, it will be a time of activations there are many of us who the lord sent you to this conference to come and to receive not just to be enlightened but to encounter graces graces that will lift you and open up new doors and new dimensions for you if you're with me say amen. amen there are many of you that tonight age-long captivities that have refused to bow to the name and the lordship of the christ by the administration of his power through his word in the name of Jesus, will ward off these arsenals of darkness against your life. There are four keys that can help you manifest the supernatural. By manifesting the supernatural, I don't just mean visionary experiences, but walking practically in the supernatural. You want your life to command signs and wonders. You want your life to be a manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom beyond the physical realm. Here are the keys. Number one, the first thing you need is knowledge. You need knowledge of the principles of scripture. You need to know the word of God. Knowledge of the principles of scripture. That means if you truly do not know the word, if you do not contend for enlightenment through the word, you may never be able to manifest the supernatural in a way that profits you 
glorifies Jesus and becomes a blessing to all who are connected to you. The word of God. The formula remains the same. In the beginning, God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, all things how many things does that include your finances your lifting your tomorrow your exaltation your restoration all things were made by him and without him that means outside of the influence of the word of god was not anything made that was made you must pay attention to scriptures I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. This is the Bible. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. He says that the word of Christ should dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom, in all wisdom, not some wisdom, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly, richly. You must allow the word of God to find expression within your spirit. You must become an addict of the word of God. If you truly want to walk in the supernatural, before you start engaging in spiritual exercises, make sure you have the fortification of the word fasting for days praying for days without a foundation of the word will only expose you to the realm of the spirit but then it will expose you to familiar spirits you must have that foundation of the word we are born of the word we live by the word we reign by the word say amen, amen. you must have knowledge I submit to you that there is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ. Spiritual ignorance. I respectfully admit, and now I'm teaching apostolically, not just to house on the rock, but generally within the body of Christ, the truth is that there is a lot of Bible study. There is a lot of scripture recitation, but there is very little access to superior knowledge spiritual knowledge we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the high level illumination that we have you must contend for light john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not you must become a student of scripture not for the purpose of preaching not for the purpose of having something to say but for your personal spiritual growth you are mature to the degree to which the word of christ abides in you john 15 the first eight, eight verses when you read from verse 1 down to verse 8 it talks of the abiding power of the word if you abide in me and my word abides in you that you will ask whatever you will and it will be given to you you have to abide I believe the word of God I study the word of God I love the word of God it is my meditation all day long it has constructed my understanding are we together one advantage of the word of God is that it constructs your viewpoint you are able to interpret life from the lens of Scripture make the word of God a priority in your life and you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living i guarantee you on this the bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters the bible scripture contains the wisest perspective on all matters now in truth i will tell you you will find a lot of theological debates as to um the fact that there may be other books of the bible and it's not only 66 books i agree I agree based on theology but the Bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God as far as the excelling of the believer is concerned there is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture 
so the information here is sufficient enough it says many miracles jesus did which are not recorded in this book so it tells you there are others that are not recorded he said but this has been recorded that you will believe and that in believing you will find life the truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the course of your lifetime is concerned are we blessed knowledge the knowledge of scripture and let me tell you this the seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself to give yourself to study and to give yourself to learning the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth preachers we must study believers we must study i am in a hurry would destroy our lives i am in a hurry would destroy our lives they are life to those who find them they are more than information to those who find them they are life the bible is not a lecture manual it contains the character of god it is a revelation of god's ways his modus operandi when you understand scripture you are enlightened dominion the word exousia that is translated authority it means delegated power that is based on light the power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one had that means if I send someone to stand for me, I would not just say delegate for me until I tell him what I know. Are we together now? That sharing together. So you come to a point of illumination. Number two, very quickly. The second key that activates the supernatural. Are we ready? Yes. The second key is faith. You must have faith in god you must have the faith of god mark 11 we'll start reading from verse 22 mark 11 this is jesus about to teach us his classic on faith jesus said unto them have faith in god for many of you who are familiar with the writings of men like papa Hagen, they would interpret this as have the faith of god next verse he says this is how the character of faith in god or the faith of god works whatsoever thou shalt say so in faith there is a saying be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart so the heart is part of the equation for faith and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the general rule is in verse 24 verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray so we see that prayer is part of the faith equation believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them you cannot manifest the supernatural if there is no faith what is faith your conviction faith is beyond believing the word believing comes from the Greek word pistis it means conviction but it does not stay with conviction you can believe and yet you have not manifested faith faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word there has to be action for it to be called faith and the action will be in accordance to the conditions he's created you don't just act at random every promise in scripture has a a predefined condition attached to it if you want to prosper in the kingdom you want supernatural prosperity and the blessings of god it is your responsibility to find out the principles that connect to that possibility there is he that scattereth the bible says and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than is meat and tends to poverty the diligent hand shall be made fat so these are all the tools that make for prosperity in the kingdom there is a place for diligence there is a place for favor there is a place for the anointing there is a place for sowing and all of these things put together when you know them and you act upon them you put pressure on god's integrity and then you begin to see a manifestation of the same most believers believe but they do not have faith if i ask you for instance to come up here 
and you keep speaking and say i am coming in the name of jesus i am coming in fact i'm running i'm in a hurry i'm coming you heard me and you are communicating with me but you have not come so many people just continue to confess and there is a place for that it's from the word homologio it means repeat as you heard to confess means to to echo it again as stated by the word but it does not mean that you just confess over everything and sit down there are things that you need to stand up and move you need to act Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you you must be careful to do not just to learn faith is not just saying what God has said faith is doing what God has said the power is in the doing are we together now when he commanded the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest he said the Bible says as they went not as they wished not as they were deciding it was as they went turning water to wine John 2 he says fetch and go and serve the Bible says as they were going that risk was what turned the water to wine can I tell you the truth? If you will ever raise a dead body, you must have the faith to stand before one. If you cannot have the courage to stand before a dead body, forget about resurrection. And I can tell you firsthand in my life, I've stood in front of a few dead bodies. Usually when people die, people are quick to call me and you know try to pray for their resurrection first before eventually they give up. So I get this quite honestly, maybe at least once every week someone has died apostle we believe something can happen and i agree i've used it to exercise my faith uh, i don't know if i've shared it here the first time it was the anatomy lab of abu zaria you know they have a mortuary there someone died and they took me there and closed the door yes sir i saw dead bodies and i was wondering now, which one am i going to pray for faith that's right faith i laid my hands on that dead body and it was as if i was touching a stone had been embalmed in the name of jesus come back to life in the name of jesus come back to life i said everything quoted everything declared remember try to remember how jesus raised the, the son of the, the widow had named Lazarus, all these people, nothing worked. Do you know, to be honest with you, at the point I stood there and I told them, I said, you people should open the door for me. <laughs> the next time would be the mortuary of the teaching hospital. Now they locked me there because usually they don't allow that. So they smuggled me in and closed the door. So many dead bodies, some lying on that. And I was watching you. Ah! I was afraid until fear do you know let me tell you one of the ways that god takes away fear look up please let me teach you something one of the ways that god takes away fear is to bring you face to face with what you are afraid of you will stay with it so long you will stop being afraid of it i prayed and prayed and nothing happened and i just used the opportunity to think about my life at least let me not waste that moment before they open the door everyone here was once alive oh god teach me to number my days that i may apply my heart unto wisdom how did i get here i'm teaching about faith hallelujah you must manifest faith now for a long time i have a few more minutes for a long time there has been a debate especially between the charismatics and you know certain believers that we may call respectfully speaking maybe word of faith it's been that there are people who choose listen carefully there are people who choose faith and there are people who choose the holy ghost 
are we together the pentecostals and the charismatics generally so the word of faith people for instance now this is not we're all word of faith you understand what i'm saying there are people who just believe that all it takes is just your faith leave the holy ghost once you have faith let he can go places and there are those who believe forget about faith faith is nonsense once you have the holy ghost just move the bible has never dichotomized faith and the holy ghost let me explain to you the ministry of faith and the holy ghost please look up i'm holding here a bottle of water the bottle is faith the holy ghost is akin to the water are we together now the power of the holy ghost has to flow through that funnel called your faith so the assignment listen to me faith has no power in itself faith is just a system of connection you must believe faith but not idolize it there is there is no dogma out of faith faith is simply a system of connection faith connects you your situation to the power of god but the agency that really brings the result is not faith it is the power of god it is his divine power that gives us all things but when we say it happened through your faith you are right because it was your faith that connected you are we together now yes can i can i use one example with money will you be sad if i bring out money praise god because there are people who are not in the mood for this kind of joke praise the name of the lord now watch this this is a hundred dollar bill are we together if i want a bottle of water watch this and this is a hundred dollars this hundred dollar bill connects me to the possibility of taking this water is that true so if you ask me how are you going to get this water i will lift this and tell you this is the assurance i have that i can get the water but what do i really need which of them do i need which one brings the satisfaction which one brings the nourishment it is not the money but without this i cannot access this that is the union between the faith and the power of god faith and the power of god don't dichotomize it no it takes faith to access the power of god it takes the power of god to provide solutions faith does not provide solutions faith is like currency currency can feed you you are right but currency is not food are you getting this example now yes so if i ask you how do you think you'll be able to buy or pay for that house you lift this if i ask you how did you purchase the house you say by god's grace i had a hundred thousand or fifty million or whatever to buy the house but it is you are not going to live in the money you will live in the house this is how faith works the assignment of faith comes to an end the moment the power of god is released are we together now you have to learn this this is what i want the miracles the breakthroughs the increase whatever it is but this is what will bring it faith so i do not ignore this and start glorifying this while i'm dying of thirst this comes so that i can use it to purchase this possibility so when god wants me to have more of this he gives me more of this are you seeing now there is there is no there is no fighting when god wants me to always have this he will make sure i always have this but this is not really what satisfies me this connects me to what provides solution for me if you understand this there will be no there will be no confusion as to the ministry of faith and the ministry of the power of god so when i say you need faith it is true like you need currency you don't go around the market or a mall strolling around and just desiring everything you want without the requisite level of finances to purchase that reality is that true so when you build your faith what are you doing you are elongating and extending and strengthening your capacity to draw the power of god it is true so when he says where is your faith 
in other words my power is available but that container that funnel to receive it remember that oil plus a small vessel does not equal profit profit is equal to oil plus a very large vessel large vessels the problem was not lack of oil it was that the capacity to carry the kind of oil that would bring that woman out of debt was not there so if i am building my faith it's like creating more vessels i'm not going to invent another oil the oil can grow to match the size of that that container that's how faith works so when you commit to building your faith listen carefully you are opening up yourself to more of the power of god more of the activity of the supernatural are we together i've even gone ahead of myself number three and the last key is the anointing second peter chapter one from verse three in fact let me give you one more before that the power of words just back up a bit the power of words i omitted one point here the power of words you cannot truly access the supernatural in silence the realm of the spirit is voice activated you manifest the realm of the spirit through words words in prayer words in word based declarations the realm of the spirit is activated through words everybody say words the bible says where the word of a king is there is power you want to walk in the supernatural words that you now declare over people for instance be healed in the name of jesus and at the point where you are speaking the power of god to bring that healing is now released are we together now every time jesus needed to perform a miracle almost every time there was a place in the equation of that miracle where words came forth lazarus he said come forth and he that was dead came forth words that means if you want to walk in the realm of the spirit there is no place for silence you must learn to declare not declare your problems not declare your pain declare scripture and command the realm of the spirit by the authority given to you in and through christ to respond to you accordingly and i will not be silent i will always worship you as long as I am breathing, I will Please look up. The Bible lets us know that we live off two things. One, bread. Two, words. Jesus himself was teaching. And he says, the only way man lives is by bread and words. Bread and words. If you have bread alone, you will not live effectively. If you have words alone, you will not live effectively. You want to live effectively in this kingdom? You need bread for the physical realm. Words for the spirit realm. Bread and words. So as I eat, I speak. No wonder you is the same mouth that you need to access both of them. Both bread and words require the same channel to remind you that you need both to survive. Bread and words. So when I begin to declare over my life, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I begin to declare over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed and my coming in is blessed. I decree and declare the Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm speaking with this understanding that words are powerful. They can create, they can adjust, they can manipulate things to be consistent with the will of the Father. 
Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God. But he is called the word of God. Are we together? When you pray, what makes prayer powerful is that it is a manifestation of words. Whether praying in the spirit or making prophetic decrees, petitions in the spirit. Listen to me. If you ignore the prayer ministry, you have ignored the opportunity to take advantage of words and create possibilities with them. Prayer is powerful. You want to access the realm of the spirit, you must obtain grace from God to pray. And please hear me in this conference, if there is anything attacking your prayer life, you must obtain grace this morning to fight it with a bulldog determination. Do not forbear with spiritual laxity. It will destroy you and give Satan access to rob you of an opportunity to live a supernatural life. Say amen, please. Amen. I believe in prayer. I truly believe in the ministry of prayer. But I believe in prayer with understanding. Not shadow boxing. I believe in prayer. The Bible calls certain kinds of prayers vain babblings. Jesus was giving warnings about prayer. And he says, when you pray, there is a protocol that you must follow. But hear me, he spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray. If you are an angel, that's all right. If you are a spirit alone, that's all right. But if you are a man, there is no record of God praying. He does not need to pray. But when God became a man, he prayed. And now that he's seated as a man, he's still praying. Even in heaven, Jesus is still praying. So all men must pray. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you